Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary, and today's video is going to be all about audiobooks. I should have told you that I loved you one more time. So if you've been on this channel for a while, then you probably know that I'm a big proponent of listening to audiobooks and using audiobooks to help bolster your reading experience as well as help you read more throughout the month. That was one of my tips in a video that I did last year about how I read so much and advice on how you can read more. This video I'm gonna divide into several sections where I'm gonna cover different topics. Um, the first topic I wanted to cover is why I think audiobooks are so helpful. Um, first and foremost, I think audiobooks are helpful because they help you save time while you read. And more than that, they help you maximize your reading time. Any time that you're spending in the car commuting, any time that you're spending walking the dogs, sometimes you have to clean your house or do chores around the house, and it's nice to have something to listen to while you're doing that and also be able to read, quote unquote, while you are doing other things that you have to do anyways. Also, I would often find myself pushing off tasks because I had books that I wanted to finish or that I needed to finish, and having an audiobook just means that I'm not wasting any of that time. Not that it's a waste of time to not listen to something or to just take a quiet moment, but I do find that listening to audiobooks definitely helps me read more throughout a month, and it also helps me um, keep engaged while I'm doing other things, and if you procrastinate like me, it might help you not put off tasks <laughs> as much as you would before. The other reason I really like audiobooks is because a lot of times audiobooks are really entertaining, so there are some really high quality um, and well-produced audiobooks, and I think those help you get more engaged in a story and can really help you enjoy a book and a story that much more. The next thing I wanted to cover is where you can listen to audiobooks. Um, I'm sure a lot of these most people know, but just in case you don't, um, there are resources that you can pay for like Scribd or Audible. Audible is through Amazon, so I don't always recommend using things through Amazon. I do know that it's a necessary evil in a lot of people's lives, but if you can use other resources that I'm gonna mention, I would recommend those above Audible, but I have used Audible in the past and they offer free credits when you first sign up for an account. Um, so you can use that and then cancel your account. I've never used Scribd, but a lot of booktubers have talked about Scribd, so I will try to leave some resources for Scribd down below as well if you're interested. I believe it's similar to Audible where you pay a monthly fee and you get a certain number of credits, but I think via Scribd, you can also get eBooks as well. I could be wrong about that. Like I've said, I've never used Scribd. Um, the biggest resource that I use for my audiobooks is Overdrive, which is now called Libby on some um, app stores, I think, or maybe it's a separate app, but it's the same company, and um, Cloud Library. I have access through both of those through my library, and so if you are curious what resources your library has for audiobooks, you can go on your library's website, and usually they have like an ebook, audiobook, app, resource page where you can find apps that you can get on your computer, apps that you can get on your phone. Um, I think some Kindles have access to apps as well. Not all of the books that I can get from my library's apps are available on my Kindle, um, but some of them are. Or if you have a Nook, I think that's the Barnes & Noble brand version of an e-reader. But um, I do frequently use my library apps. That's primarily what I use for audiobooks. Um, and also YouTube has audiobooks. And that YouTube usually has audiobooks for older works um, and works that are public domain. Using YouTube is actually how I listened to the audiobook that spurred the idea for this video, um, which was The Lord of the Rings. If you are interested, I will have a full reading vlog where I read all three of The Lord of the Rings books in one weekend. Um, that will be coming to you next week at some point, uh, whenever I can get it edited and stuff. But um, I'm really excited about that. So if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified when it gets posted. But YouTube has some really great audiobooks available for free. So if you're reading an older book and you would like an audiobook, you can just go ahead and look it up on YouTube. Um, I would highly recommend that as a resource as well. The next thing I want to talk about is what you should look for in an audiobook and what makes a book a good candidate to be listened to rather than read physically. Um, and this is, I think, the trickiest part because I think if there are certain books that if you get as an audiobook, you won't understand it, you won't enjoy it, you, you will rate the book lower and think you didn't like it. Um, also, some audiobooks are not as easy to follow. Some narrators are more annoying than others. So one of these things is definitely just know what you like to listen to and what you don't like to listen to. So like if a certain narrator's voice gets on your nerves, that most likely will not get better throughout listening to the audiobook. So I would just recommend scrapping it and getting that book physically if you want to continue reading it. But the biggest things that I would look for in audiobooks for what makes a good audiobook, nonfiction books make great audiobooks. Because um, usually with nonfiction, you're not trying to keep track of a plot. 
you are either learning something or you are listening. I listen to a lot of memoir. So you are reading or learning about someone's life. Um, and I just think having that told to you as a story or like spoken to me at least makes it um, easier to digest. And nonfiction books, I just think lend themselves really well to being listened to um, rather than physically read because sometimes they can be a bit drier. But if you're listening to that, you don't get bogged down and bored um, and you're being told the information rather than having to read it. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I also don't know if this will make sense, but when I am reading something for school that I'm finding really dense, I will often read it out loud because reading it isn't helping me, but hearing it back does for some reason. So if you're anything like me in that regard, then I think nonfiction audiobooks are definitely a good way to go. Also, something that I look for in audiobooks are audiobooks that are narrated by the author. So nonfiction books tend to do this a little bit as well. Um, a lot of memoirs are narrated by the author. Um, for example, The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. I listen to this via audio and Jeanette Walls does the narration and it's really impactful to get to listen to her tell her own story. Um, it almost feels like a TED talk or a podcast in that sense. Also, uh, Kitchen Confidential, I read in January, um, so I just talked about this, but Anthony Bourdain, it's Anthony Bourdain's book and he actually is the one who narrated it. So it's really fun to listen to him tell the stories of working in the kitchen. And again, it feels a little bit like a podcast. So if you do enjoy podcasts, I think you would like nonfiction audiobooks as well. And then for a fiction op option, um, Elizabeth Acevedo narrates her own audiobooks. And most of her novels are in verse. She has one novel that's not in verse called With the Fire on High that I have not read. But I did listen to The Poet X as an audiobook and I also listened to Clap When You Land, which is a phenomenal audiobook. So I would highly recommend either of those via audio. Books that are read by the authors I think are great to read via audiobook because you actually get a lot of what the author intended and you, you're not at risk of losing anything from listening to it because you, I even think you gain more. So I do really enjoy audiobooks that are narrated by the authors. The other thing I would look for with audiobooks are um, books that you have read before. Um, so I recently, last summer, I'll post the, the vlog somewhere, I read or reread all of the Twilight books in preparation for Midnight Sun. And listening to those via audiobook was great because I was familiar with the plots, familiar with the stories, I'd read them a bunch before. So any books that are rereads to you are really good to listen to via audiobook, whether you're preparing for a sequel or a prequel like I was, or I guess a retelling. I'm not really sure what Midnight Sun was supposed to be, but um, I think that can be really helpful as well. And the other thing that I would say that's similar but not exactly the same are books that you're familiar with the plot of. So like I already mentioned, I recently read all of The Lord of the Rings and I utilized the audiobook a lot to read them. And because I'd seen the movies so many times, I knew the plot of the books and it was just really nice to have an audiobook of something that was telling you this story that you've heard so many times. And that way, again, you're not at risk of losing as much information on something that you've already read before, so you're already familiar with. And then the last thing that I would recommend looking for for audiobooks are books that have a full cast and um, books that have like special effects and audio effects, um, music with them, uh, like fully produced audiobooks. Um, again, the Lord of the Rings one that I will have linked down below is amazing for this. Also plays I recommend to listen to as audiobooks, which I didn't already mention, but usually a play will have a full cast and plays are just better listened to than read in my opinion. I'm just gonna leave you now with some extra tips for how to utilize audiobooks and how to really get the most out of your reading experience. My first tip would be to listen to some books while you read them physically. So not for every book. Um, this won't necessarily help because some books, the audiobooks are so much slower than your natural reading pace. But sometimes I think it does help if you are trying to get the feel for a narrative to listen to the audiobook while you read. I did that with Shauna McGuire's Middle Game for quite a bit of it. And I also have done that with the Remembrance of Earth's Past series by Sitsin Liu for a couple different reasons. Um, Middle Game is kind of confusing to start. Um, so listening to the audiobook really helped me get a feel for the characters. Some people really hated the Middle Game audiobook. I don't mind it. I think it's fine. But again, if you don't like it, if you don't like the way a narrator is doing an audiobook, do not listen to that audiobook because it will drive you crazy for the whole time. The Remembrance of Earth's Past series is translated from Chinese. And so it was helpful for me to listen to the narrator tell me the story because they could pronounce things correctly. And once I got a hang of the pronunciation, it was easier for me to physically read the book. And I was able to skim over sections that before I would have had to sit there and like sound out in my brain 
to try to figure out what the author was saying, but because I'd heard them say it, it made more sense. But if I had just tried to listen to that book, I think it would have been too confusing because the concepts would have been too large. The other time that I think it's helpful to listen while you read or pick up an audiobook of a book that you physically read is if you're having a hard time staying invested in the plot. Um, audiobooks, like I mentioned, go by a little bit faster. So if you don't want to necessarily sit there and skim read or your mind is wandering while you're trying to physically read, sometimes listening to the audiobook while you read can help you focus. Um, or just listening to the audiobook while you do other tasks, you'll still pick up on the story if it's something that you, for some reason, you want to hear the book, but you're just not fully invested in reading it, because that's happened to me before, it can help to listen to the audiobook um, if you're having a hard time with drier books. One of the other tips that I will say for listening to an audiobook is that you can adjust the speed. So depending on the speed and the cadence of the narrator's voice, if it's a lot slower than your reading pace, you can bump that sucker up. I read my audiobooks on 1.75 to 2.0 speed only. I don't go lower than that unless I'm having a really hard time keeping up with what the, the narrator is saying. I like reading speed in my brain is a lot faster than my talking speed or than other people's talking speeds. So for me, sometimes listening to an audiobook on, <laughs> especially on like ones, one times, is just not, it's just not it. Um, but I do enjoy that you can raise or lower the speed of your audiobooks. The final tip that I will leave you with is that some books just don't make good audiobooks. So it's really important to know your preferences, know what you can and can't handle. But yeah, if it's got a really complicated plot and you're having a hard time keeping everything straight, sometimes it's easier to just read it physically because then you can highlight, mark things, go back to things if you need to, um, which is not something that's available. The biggest example of this, it's right behind me too. The epitome of a book that was not a good audiobook for me to listen to was Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. This book was so confusing via audiobook and I could not keep any of the characters straight. There's like a cast of characters at the beginning and how they relate to everybody, but I had a really hard time listening to this and referencing back. Even reading while I listened, I couldn't figure out who was talking or what they were talking about or where we were. And I think part of that is the narrative structure of this book, but also part of it was trying to listen to it as an audiobook. So like I said, just know yourself, know what you like and what you don't like and what you can handle. The biggest tip that I will leave you with that I've already said about a hundred times is if you don't like a narrator, you will not like an audiobook just because the narrator makes it. The narrator is how you read the book um, and it audiobooks, can affect your overall rating of a book if you um, are listening to an audiobook that you don't like the production of. It will affect your like enjoyment of the book and your probably your overall like opinion on that book. So yeah, I hope these tips were helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye! I